Hello, YouTube. Today in the Naughty Library, and I'm going over my January TBR list. Amanda, it's January. Why do you have your Christmas decorations up? Why? Because I like them and I'm getting my money's worth. <laughs> I know. I know. They're going to come down soon. But until they do, I'm going to I'm going to thoroughly enjoy them. So they're still up for now. But anyway, we're going to move forward and we're going to talk about the books I'm planning to read this January. There's some uh, pretty good stuff on it. So first things first, we're going to start off with our book club stuff. For the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club, we are going to be reading Lud in the Mist by Hope Mirless. And this was picked by Leanna. And the uh, live show will be the end of the month on Leanna's channel. I don't think we've picked a day for that quite yet, but it will be like probably the last Saturday of the month. And I don't know a ton about what this is about. I know it's a fantasy classic. Um, it is, I think it came out in 1926. And basically there's this town called Ludd and um, they make selling fairy fruit illegal but that makes like a black market of fairy fruit happen and then like eating the fairy fruit has like both horrible and wondrous effects. That's about all I know about it but it is OG fantasy and that's kind of gonna be our theme for the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club this year. OG 23. We're gonna go OG on each of our favorite genres of choice. So Liana loves fantasy. We're going OG fantasy, Lud in the Mist. So I'm excited to read it. I'm hoping hopefully it's gonna be a good time. Who knows? It's gonna be fun. <laughs> For my channel members and my patrons, we also have a book club. And this month we are going to be reading White Horse by Erica T. Worth. This one won the poll over on my patron and my channel. So I'm really excited about this one. It sounds so cool. We're following Carrie and she's a very thoroughly modern woman. I think I'd be friends with her. She sounds cool. But um, she is given like this bracelet that used to belong to her mother. And this bracelet conjures up a whole lot of stuff, a monstrous entity, the ghost of her mother. And now Carrie is in like this whirlwind of things and she has to figure out what happened to her mother and examine like all of these like dysfunctional family relationships. So it's a bit of a murder mystery. There's like a supernatural element in this. I think it's gonna be really, really cool. I have been wanting to read this since I got it from Book of the Month. So I'm very excited to read it with all of my channel members and patrons this month. Okay, and, and I also got like a whole bunch of fantasy books. I can't hold them, I keep dropping. Oh God, okay, fantasy, I have a lot of them. <laughs> okay, on that note, um. First things first, I'm going to finally be reading The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. Very excited for this one. I mean, the cover, ugh, gorgeous. I'm obsessed. So this is like, um, it's a YA fantasy and we're dealing with this like spooky town called Hemlock Falls. It's surrounded by like a really dense forest and there is a group, like it, it's from always going on. They're called the Luminaries and they are the defender of the town from the monsters that live in the forest. It's giving me like a dash of the village vibes. I don't think it's going to be that, fingers crossed, <laughs> but um, we're following like, you know, the defenders of this town from the spooky forests and like, um, the last line of the blurb is really good. It's not all monsters can be slain and not all nightmares are confined to the dark. So another ooky spooky one. I'm like doing ooky spooky January and I'm like living for it. <laughs> also on deck, I have The World We Make by N.K. Jemisin. And I loved the first book of this series, The City We Became. I loved it intensely. It was one of my best books of the year so good and so i had to get this one this is the sequel so basically here's the gist of this world um basically cities uh when they grow to a point where they have like thousands and or, or hundreds or millions of people living in them all of their own thoughts and feelings and hopes and dreams and stuff it kind of creates its own living entity composite of all these people and the city is born. It's a city, it's a living entity, and they uh, have an avatar that is the city. The city of New York has several avatars, one for each borough, and they have to join together to fight off interdimensional Lovecraftian demons who don't want cities to be born. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> and this is like the sequel to it. The fight for New York is still going on. There's still interdimensional demons. I am excited. I love the first book. I can't wait to read this one. And speaking of sequels, I also have Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. 
Oh man, did I love the first book of this series, Legendborn. Hot damn was that phenomenal. I cannot wait to read this. I came out already and it's been a couple months and I haven't read it yet and it's driving me crazy. Basic gist of the world here. <laughs> it's kind of like secret society and um, the Knights of the Round Table, like King Arthur, the Arthurian tales, they were true. And Merlin was a heck of a wizard and he cast a spell basically that allows the original knights to become like avatars basically like um in their descendants so whoever is the most recent descendant is now the avatar for this knight and um they have to band together to fight off like evil demon stuff you know like who doesn't want to fight demons? <laughs> but, um, oh boy, there was a lot of like cliffhangery stuff in the first book. I can't wait to get into it. It's an Arthurian legend retelling done so well. I'm obsessed. So very excited for this one. And I'm also going to be reading Sign Here by Claudia Lux. This is, I believe, a debut and I am really excited for it. It kind of gives me um, Doomed by Chuck Palahniuk vibes. So this takes place in hell. We're following a guy, his name is Peyote Trip. I know, but we're gonna call him Pay for short. And he's been working kind of in uh, hell's, you know, office where it's like, you know, um, all of the horrible things about being working in an office and do that every day for eternity. And basically he needs one more member of the Harrison family to sell their soul to him and he gets his ticket out of this like office doom. So um, yeah, it, it's him trying to like get this to happen, but maybe things aren't as they seem, etc. cetera. So um, I'm excited. I think it's gonna be really sardonic and fun. And I love stories like this. So another one I'm very excited to read. I think it's like a debut, so I don't have a frame of reference for how this author is going to write, but yes, excited. Ookie spooky January. Kind of ooky spooky fantasy adjacent, I have Nothing More to Tell by Karen M. McManus, and this is going to be a murder mystery. It's YA, but older YA, I would say. And we're following Bryn. Five years ago, her favorite teacher at her high school got murdered. And the murder was never solved, but um, the teacher's body was found by three students at the school, one of which was her former best friend. Now, here's the thing. Her former best friend, Trip, if he didn't give his account of events to the police, those other two kids who found the body would probably have been arrested for the murder. Trip knows this, the kids with Trip know this as well, and now they've all become like the most popular people around and stuff, so it's kind of been beneficial, however, what Trip told the cops was a lie. What lie? Who did it? Who did this? And then Bryn is finally coming back to town to like be an intern on like a true crime podcast because of course, and uh, she's gonna solve the mystery. So I'm excited, twisty turny murder mystery. And of course, I'm gonna throw in just a couple of romances for good measure. I'm going to read A Matter of Temptation by Stacey Reed. I love a good Stacey Reed historical. They are so fun and like delightfully smutty. This one is Mina and Simon. So Mina is um, kind of a fallen debutante. She was ruined, quote unquote, in the eyes of society several years ago for one mistake. And so ever since then, she's just kind of been living at her family's estates and being sad because she doesn't get to live the life she wants. She's just kind of there with her brother, helping him manage things. However, brother finally tells her, like, listen, we don't got no money. We're very poor. And she's like, oh shit, I gotta go get a job. So she goes to the town to get a job, get some money for the family. I love her tenacity. And she's gonna be like a secretary. She's smart, she knows how to manage stuff. Good choice for her. And the only person willing to hire her is Simon, who is the Earl of Questwick. And he is trying to get a reform bill passed and he hires her because he needs help. And um, she's also like feisty and funny and like has like great red hair he's really into. And, and like, you know, there's gonna be a lot of like long nights at the office, <laughs> maybe secrets. And um, they're gonna fall in love for real. And I'm very into that. So um, love that. So excited for this one. This is gonna be my treat myself book. And last but not least, I'm also going to be reading Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca. This is her most recent entry in her Renaissance Fair romance series. 
This one is Dex and Lulu. These are two characters, like fan favorite characters. We wanting to see their happy ending, but I didn't. I didn't always put them together, but I love that for them. So Lulu uh, or Louise, um, she is a high powered attorney and workaholic. Hates it. Finally decides um, I need to escape. Renfair comes along. Um, her brother is Mitch, who we met several times in other books, and um, she joins the Renfair. She runs away with the circus, kind of, <laughs> and she's like, I need this. And um, the only downside is Dex. Now, Dex, he is like the bad boy of the Renaissance Fair, where he like, he's in like the band, and he wears like a kilt sometimes, and like every, you know, like a girl in every town kind of guy. And um, L Lulu is kind of um, indifferent to his flirting, and he's like, "I don't, um, I don't compute." <laughs> like he doesn't understand why it's not working. Also, there's like th things going on with the band that's like problematic, and he's like, "Oh man, like I've just been living my life coasting, and I actually have to figure out my future at this point." So it's like a himbo growing up real quick. And then a lot of forced proximity, maybe a dash of enemies to lovers going on here, but I am excited. I, I'm really hoping for like a sweet smutty disaster of a romance here. I'm so excited for it. All right, so that's what's on deck for January. There are a lot of really like hot releases coming out in January, but I like never get to a hot release right away. It's never happened. <laughs> so those will probably be in February. But in the meantime, I'm having an ooky spooky January and I'm feeling it. It's kind of winter. Everything's kind of gloomy. Like, let's read ooky spooky books. They don't only have to be for October. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, what are you reading for the new year? Do you have something? Do you have a reading goal in particular that you're super interested in? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And also, if you want cool exclusive content, including a book club and early access to videos, you consider becoming a channel member or a patron. The links for that are in the description down below. And on that note, I will see you guys soon. Goodbye!